Hey guys, it's Jess with Tech House Inspections. I, um, it's winter, so I thought it was a good time to talk about furnaces. So I'm actually in Lon's workshop today to talk to you I'm using his furnace. Um, my furnace is in a little tighter spot, so I thought this would be a bit better so I could kind of get around it all and show you everything. So um, I'll flip this around and I will show you what I'm talking about. So this is the furnace here. This is a high efficiency furnace. You can spot that right out the gate because it has PVC venting. Um, the lower efficient furnaces will all have a metal flue pipe. So that's an easy giveaway. Um, the reason being is that, you know, they have to be 90% efficient or above to get to PVC venting um, because otherwise the exhaust gases would be too hot and they would melt the plastic. So that's a dead giveaway right there. We're dealing with a high efficiency furnace. Um, the other thing with high efficiency furnaces is they're also called high condensed furnaces. So if we're way back from science class that one of the byproducts of heat is moisture. So um, on a on an older type furnace, less efficient furnace, an 80% efficient furnace, um, they will be able to carry the exhaust gases are so hot they can carry most of that moisture up and out the flue pipe with them. Unfortunately, that's also what works against those metal flue pipes because that exhaust gas is corrosive. Um, so it does corrode that metal over time. So um, that's really what works against most of our, our furnace components actually is, is the moisture that is a byproduct of the heat they're producing. So, um, but with high efficiency furnaces, they can't carry all that moisture up out of the flue pipe with them uh, because it's just not that hot. So they've got to do something else. So those of you, you may be used to seeing this. If you have a floor drain right, right nearby, you may not have one of these. Um, and, but if you are, you may be used to hearing this little condensate pump kick on um, just in cooling mode when your air conditioner is running because it's all the humidity that's getting pulled out of the air, it's dumping it here and then it uses usually a tube and it runs it up and over usually to a laundry tub or something like that. So this is a condensate pump. I always tell people when they have high efficiency furnaces that you're going to hear that pump running now both in heating and cooling mode. So um, something to just kind of keep in mind. And if you ever come home and there's a little puddle on the floor, it's probably because the condensate pump has failed. It's just a little electric motor. They're not that expensive to replace. Um, they just have a little tiny sump float in them. So that's something that you can kind of keep in mind. And also in cooling mode, if you come home and your air conditioner is running and there's a big puddle on the floor, it's probably because that condensate pump has failed. So check that first because that's a pretty inexpensive thing. You can pick them up at Home Depot or most of the big box stores and replace it pretty easily yourself. Um, so, so that's the condensate pump. The other thing that I always show people to be really mindful of because this this happens quite a bit, um, is the service switch. So on this one, this is your service switch right here. Um, sometimes they just look like a regular old light switch. And um, this is, they're often mounted right on the side of the furnace, but they really should be, they should be within sight of the furnace. So um, it's something though that I tell if your furnace is in an area where say it's near the laundry area where it's somewhere that it could get bumped or maybe it's in an area um, that the kids go down and play um, and you're in your house and you think it's starting to get a little cold in here. Oh darn, is my furnace broken? Before you call the HVAC company out, just go down and check that somehow somebody or one of the kids hasn't bumped and accidentally turned that switch off. Um, you'd be surprised how frequently that does happen. So just Priority number one, check and make sure that hasn't accidentally been churned off before you call the HVAC guys. Um, the other thing I tell people too sometimes is, you know, with these, especially the high efficiency furnaces, there are a lot of um, safety features on them um, that, you know, can sometimes have little glitches or issues that aren't necessarily a hardware failure. Um, so flipping that switch off um, and leaving it off for a minute or so and then turning it back on, it's kind of like resetting your computer. So if there is an actual hardware component issue, it will reoccur, it'll shut itself off again. But sometimes it'll go through what's called like a soft lockout and you can reset it just by flipping the switch off and turning it back on again. So that's an easy place to start before you call the HVAC company. Um, I always tell people when you turn it back on, have the cover off so that you can then watch it through the rest of its startup process and see um, if you can narrow down where the, the issue is in the startup process. Um, and I'll show you what that is in a minute or so. So looking at the furnace, um, you know, this is, this is for the return air here. Um, so we always do this for our clients. Um, we write the filter size here and the direction of the airflow. You'll notice on all your filters, there's always an arrow and um, that it should be installed in. And that's 
always going to be towards your furnace. So even if you have a downdraft, it's always going to be in the direction that the air is flowing in towards the furnace. So this is where the return air comes back. It gets filtered, goes into the furnace, and it's heated, and it goes up and out of your house. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. And these big four inch filters, um, four or five inch filters, I've even seen six inch filters. Um, they're great, um, at, at, at filtering. The only thing that I always tell people with those filters is, you know, they tell you, oh, they're six month filters. You just put it in there. You don't have to think about it for six months. And that may be true. If you have a really immaculate house, you don't have any pets. Um, but for a lot of people, it's not. And at least probably twice a summer, I end up defrosting somebody's a coil, um, for their air conditioner because, you know, they went, Oh, it was only been in there for five months. Well, it's a really thick media for the air to pass through. And when it gets dirty, it becomes even harder for the air to move through there and it will ice up the a coil. And then you'll think, Oh no, my air conditioner is broken. And, always go down and check that filter. Um, you know, so I tell people, you know, even if that's the right size for your furnace, just change it every three, four months. Like you would a typical one inch filter. You're going to go through one extra filter a year. Um, it's not, it's not the end of the world. Um, and it will also cut down the amount of dust and dusting that you have to do in your house because most of the air in your house is going to cycle through that filter. And if it's clean, it's grabbing more of the dust and dirt, then it's not going to land on your tables and your furniture. So kind of bear that in mind as well. Um, and it improves the air quality in the house to, to keep your filter clean. So furnace itself over here, um, this is your draft inducing blower fan. So this is what's getting rid of all the flue gases. So you can see here how to know which pipe is which. The one that's attached to the draft inducing blower fan, that's your exhaust piping. The other pipe here, this is your combustion air intake. So you can see it's it's attached to the combustion chamber here. So that's bringing air in for combustion. Now, sometimes I have seen where you know, this one is pulling air in from the outside and that's pretty common, but every now and then I'll see where it just sort of terminates like right here and it's pulling its combustion air in from the room that it's in. Um, and if that's the case, then you have to make sure that the room it's in is actually does actually have enough combustion air supplied to it. Because a lot of times, you know, you'll have like here, you'll have the water heater and the furnace right next to each other and they need a fair bit of combustion air um, if they're both gas, gas fired um, appliances. So with this furnace, it's pulling it in from outside. So it's a non-issue, but if yours, if you have a 80% older, um, an older furnace, um, it is pulling its combustion air in from the room that it's in. So sometimes I'll hear people say, oh, but my furnace is ugly. I'm going to put a door on it. You know, if you do that, make sure that it has slats or louvers or you cut out vents to supply enough air into that room um, for the combustion. It's, it can be a really serious problem if those gas fired appliances do not have enough combustion air. So that's important to remember. Um, so you have the draft inducing blower fan, and then this is your gas line coming in. This is the gas valve. Here's your combustion, your burn chamber here. And then here's your big blower fan in the bottom compartment. So we're going to flip this on. And the first thing that's going to happen when your thermostat calls for heat, it's cold, is this draft inducing blower fan is going to kick on. And you can see the wires running off of it. Um, it's got a fan proving switch attached to it. It's got to run long enough to flip that fan switch over so it says, hey, I can safely get rid of the exhaust gases. We can go ahead and light. So once it flips that fan proving switch on, flips it over, says, all right, it's safe. Then you'll see the hot surface igniter in there start to glow. And the gas valve here is going to open up. And that hot surface igniter is going to provide enough energy. And you're going to get all of your burners here are going to light. So this is an enclosed chamber, so it's a little hard to see, but you'll see once it lights, oh, hear it there, and you should have a nice a, a blue flame. Um, on this one, it's hard to see, um, but you can see it's largely blue. If your, your furnace um, still has an open, open chamber so you can see into it, um, that's a great way to look. You should have a largely blue flame. Little flickers of orange and stuff here and there are fine, but largely blue means you're getting a clean flame. And then the last part of that process, is the big blower fan on the bottom here, once the plenum gets so warm, this is going to just blow cold air, it's now going to pull that air, the blower fan's going to kick on, it's going to pull return air through the filter, and then the blower fan is going to push it up through the heat exchanger 
and then you get hot air blowing through your house. So the heat exchanger is kind of right in the middle of your furnace and it's a wavy piece of metal that basically that flame we just saw is on one side of that metal warming the metal and the air you breathe is passing on the other side of that metal. So that's how the air gets warm. Um, the air you breathe should never actually be in direct contact with that metal. Um, if there's a crack in your heat exchanger though, um, which you can visually check for if you can see inside of your combustion chamber is when that blower fan kicks on, that flame should not move. Because remember, the air should not be in contact with that flame. If that flame wiggles around like it's being blown around by air, it means you have a crack in that heat exchanger and you now have a pathway potentially for carbon monoxide to be blowing around your house. Um, but remember, just because there's a flame, it does not mean that there's carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a byproduct of incomplete combustion. So it is important though to put smoke and carbon monoxide detectors all around your house. You should have a minimum of one on every floor. Change the batteries in them every year and replace them every few years. You know, you, they're inexpensive. You buy them in a two pack, you know, a lot of times at the big box stores, just put them throughout your house. They do save lives. Um, and, and if you have um, a heat vent near the furnace, in the room that the furnace is in, pretty near there, um, put a carbon monoxide detector near there because that's gonna be the first place if there is a carbon monoxide leak, that's gonna be the first place that it's gonna signal because it'll be at the highest concentration because the furnace would be the source. Um, so those are a couple of things um, with furnaces that you know you can, can be mindful of with, and with your own. Um, you know, pull the cover off from time to time and, and see how it's running. You know, you can hear this one here, both the fan motors sound fine, but if you hear, you know, both those fans, both the large blower fan in the bottom compartment and the smaller draft inducing blower fan, they're, they're just fan motors, so they can fail. So if all of a sudden you're down there in your basement one day and you hear kind of a whirring sound or something doesn't sound quite right, it could be those fan motors, you know, going bad. And that's something that isn't that difficult for an HVAC technician to replace for you. Um, and then you don't don't have a day where you don't have heat as a result of it. Um, so a few things to keep in mind and you know take a look at your own furnace, open it up, see how it's doing. And if it's getting older, you really should have it serviced once a year um, to have somebody come out and take a look at it. So, all right, see you guys later.